Because yeah, you have. I mean, technically, yeah, you. It's could... hard because season season passes now are like yeah. or battle passes are like they have a stigma against them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how loot boxes were. <gasps> Remember loot? Everybody hated loot boxes. Everybody. Hated Everybody loot boxes. hated. At least with battle Most. passes or season passes, you uh, know exactly. You what know getting. what you're getting. Yeah. No duplicates. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Gaming Sagacity, Episode 8. How are we all doing? My name is Michael, a.k.a. Freak Weasel. And I'm Brandon, a.k.a. Recon Viper. You know, one day we're not going to be have to introduce ourselves. It's going to be really nice. It's going to yeah. be very... It's just going to be... Hey, guys, welcome to Gaming Sagacity. We're, we're back. All right, let's go through this. That's what we're going to be like. Just like drones. Little, little, little drones going through going through our little test subjects. All right, what works? Uh, obviously we're here for game news and other uh stories we would like to tell on the way. Um, what game has you enthralled right now? Enthralled meaning full fledged, deep dive, knuckle deep, like. Honestly, most of my time has been in Destiny. Destiny 2. Are you excited for Light Forge to come out? That's next month, isn't it? Mm-hmm. If I get a, if I get some type of income rolling in, yeah, I'll be excited for it. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. It's expensive. Because what is it? Is it $60? Yeah, but honestly, if you really want to play the game, you, you should get the big one because... It comes with the season pass, basically, which is, it's not just like the season pass for the first season. It's like all of them. So the next expansion. Gotcha. So it's like, it's really worth it. And I think it's like 80 or 90. I think I can get it like for a little cheaper though. The biggest thing uh, for Destiny 2 that, that I brought up to you before was their implementation of premium monthly services. Now, I barely play Destiny 2. You play Destiny 2. Mind you, mind you, people have found this out by data mining, so it's not the most reliable source. But we, uh, we still have to talk about it because it, it has been brought up. What could they make a monthly service of in that game? I mean, the obvious so ones are are any gear that isn't competitive. So sparrows, um, banners, icons. Uh, I'm just trying to think of anything else that is non PvP related in that game that you could ships. I mean. But that's just my thing is, is I I feel like they already do a decent job with the in game store. Do um, they do they have a battle pass? Yeah, that yeah. Okay, we we'll, we'll get back to that later then. They so that that was the thing about getting the annual annual pass mm-hmm. is the uh, it comes with the season pass for all the seasons. Yes. So I guess they technically could make. A subscription out of the seasons the season passes the biggest but, things that yeah. they said was early releases of missions and destinations um you'd get that with your monthly subscription i don't think changing when content is available is going to really change um the game that much okay because I th- still feel like the majority of people aren't gonna just wait, but then you have those people who like make content or they just play the game and have money where they don't really care about spending it to get the content early. Just go, just go in <clears throat> into it. I um, I don't I don't I don't I haven't looked at the I haven't looked at Bungie's revenue on like how much they make on everything in the game, but I feel like okay. they do a decent job. At mitigating pay to win okay because everything that you pay money for is cosmetic 
and you, and at the same time you still get cosmetics in game without paying for it. True. And there's still like I think that's something that WoW does really poorly with their with their uh cosmetic stuff is the cosmetics that you pay for look way better than anything that you can get in game destiny like you there are plenty of things that you can earn in game like by getting achievements and stuff that look freaking cool yeah they actually put time and effort into something that you could earn comparative to buy and and the thing is is like there are really really cool things on the store too yeah so it kind of makes you want everything which is why it's a cool model because like you you're gonna incentivize people to buy because they just want everything because everything is cool i mean personally that's what i would do yeah but like i said i haven't looked at their numbers so i don't know if they're making good money so i don't know sure i mean obviously it's nothing like fortnite fortnite something new comes out and the whole game buys it i mean it's that that's crazy that, that that's still a thing um I think the biggest, I mean, with premium monthly services, I mean, there's so many different ways you can implement that uh, in into video games. Um, what game would you want to see a monthly subscription? Or what game would you think would do great with a monthly subscription? Just to play the game or just like a... Like a season no, pass? just like like just like a season pass, but... That doesn't currently have... Exactly, because every everything has a season pass. Because yeah, you have. I mean, technically, yeah, you. It's could... hard because season season passes now are like yeah. or battle passes are like they have a stigma against them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how loot boxes were. <gasps> Uber loot. Everybody hated loot boxes. Yeah. Everybody, hated everybody hated loot boxes. at least with battle passes or season passes, you uh, know exactly you know what you're, what getting. you're getting. Yeah, no duplicates. Um, I think if anybody ever watches this, uh, they, I'm probably gonna get rain for this, but I actually think eventually Tarkov would be interesting with a season pass. Ooh, now. What would you from Tarkov? What would you put on for a season pass? It's really interesting because the game is predicated on losing gear, right? Like that. That's the yes. whole like the whole reason why that game is hard is because you lose. Yes. Um. So maybe make it cosmetic where you get special permanent cosmetic clothes gloves clothes knives stuff like that yeah so that would be really interesting so like a knife box every month yeah because uh when you die you don't lose your knife in your knife slot that'd be nice that'd Um, be nice because there are literally things in the game right now where like People who ordered the game like way way back have like a permanent armband that every time they wipe they still get it. Oh, so like stuff like that. So like gloves, like special cosmetics. Gloves. Yes, I think that would be really okay. good. Maybe maybe mix a, like some supplies in there, like meds and stuff, like just for fillers. So you could actually like in that in that case it kind of would be pay pay to win in that case, but just make it so it's not like you're getting the meta guns. And you're just, as long as you pay for it, you're constantly getting stuff, you know? So, I think I am on the... I'm against majority rule on this. I think the best place to put premium monthly services from a company standpoint is on single-player games that have DLC. Okay. Okay. So DLC comes out, people with monthly services get it a week before. Okay, I mean, then, I don't, I don't and, see a problem with that. Nope, and then you, but you make it, you make the monthly services cheaper than season pass. 
Oh, sorry, more expensive. Sorry, that's my fault. More expensive than season pass. From a business perspective, coming like looking at that, the problem is there's not really an incentive if you know you're gonna get the content later. You know what I mean? True. So, it's a bad product because the majority are gonna be like, "I'll just wait." Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not in a rush to get it. Yeah. The majority so like there's got to be a creative way to incentivize uh getting the content early like like look what wow does when they incentivize that you're gonna get access to dra drac fear like mm -hmm. way before everybody else that doesn't pre-order right like stuff like that and the fact that you get like a mount and a pet and a, like they have to do that because otherwise people would yeah. just wait so yeah, I mean that. I mean payday. I mean there's so many impl so payday, that series, they implement. Uh, they don't have like season passes or anything. They just have. Uh, so after, you're because you can have masks and you can have different skins for your masks and different color themes and all this right, and then. With your guns, you have all these different attachments and everything. So after you're done with a a heist, they basically once they kick you out, you have three different cards to choose from, and you can turn over one card. They reveal the other two cards, and then they turn over the the card and it tells you what you got. So it 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 does that for you. I just don't know. There's so many different ways you can implement a premium monthly service that, I mean, with that, it could be anything from you get different masks to you get different guns to, because especially with a single player game, there's no PVP aspects you have to really look towards. You, but I don't think you can do anything cosmetically from a business standpoint that you can't do anything cosmetically in a, in a single player video game. Because it's instantly, well, why can't you just put it as an achievement or something that we get later on? It's like, okay. Yeah, I think the reason why cosmetics do so well in online multiplayer games is because all they're doing is showing off. Yeah, it's just, it's just hey guys, look what I got today. So like, the incentive to show off in single player games is only there if you're streaming the game, right? Streaming the game, so, showing to other kid, people, yeah. I think the only extracurricular that you could do for a single player game is to add content. So just basically just pay for content, which is already but it's which is already done. I don't think a monthly subscription would do well in the single player format. With Borderlands, they have pushed out content for I feel like the only way you could do it would be content for holidays halloween christmas new year's Eve, or new year's i feel like that's the only way you can actually push out content for a single player game yeah I mean, there's a reason there's why it, we're missing. it does well yeah. i mean look at me I, I literally stayed up until five o'clock last night grinding out destiny to to get Make sure I had everything before the Christmas event. Yeah, that was <laughs> Jesus, Brandon. That was you when you told me that I was like, Jesus, how why? Now did you did all three of you stay up doing it or was it just you? So <clears throat> one of the gripes I have with Destiny is there's a lot of content locked behind uh player account. Like you mm -hmm. can only go into certain things with three people. So we, Bree's boyfriend got on, so we had to split up, and they got, they had most of the stuff done, but, and I, I played with them for a while, because Jazz went to go watch a, a movie, and then I played with them, knocked out a bunch of stuff, and then Jazz came, and she's like, I kind of want to get it done. Jazz didn't end up getting it done, though, I ended up finishing it, because it was like four o'clock, she's like, I'm done, and I'm like, okay, I only had a little bit to go, so I finished it. Dude, that's that's crazy that you actually finished that. Um, yeah, 
Destiny Destiny's been your been your game for a while now. Uh are you are you enjoying it? I like the gameplay loop. It is very grindy. I can tell you that. Yeah. You have to like do things over and over and over again. But the gameplay is fun enough for me to not hate it. That's that's something that I really struggle with Tarkov because I love Tarkov. Mm-hmm. Right. It checks so many boxes, but the game is just bloody difficult. And you you mix like cheaters on top of that and like desync, and it's like, ugh, why am I playing this? The the question I have for you, because we were just talking about the 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 battle pass for Destiny. What's the battle pass like for Destiny? It actually gives you a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of currency. actual things you could use. Yeah, or... like it gives you uh gear. It gives you gear. Okay. Um, so it actually, in a way, actually, in a lot of ways, uh, their season passes, uh, their season, yeah, the battle pass for the season, is extremely overpowered for somebody who doesn't have it. Um, you still get it whether you pay for it or not. Just obviously, they have like a like a free version on the top and then the bottom you get yeah. more stuff. <clears throat> okay. But what's cool is you can backtrack just like any other battle pass and like pay for it and Ooh. get everything. But um yeah, that gives you like so in the game the game you don't really have a level per se. Uh it's based on gear. I don't like item level essentially. So you get say you like you're like you start at fourteen hundred, right? Um all you do to get better gear is you increase the average item level that you have on your character, and then as gear drops, uh, the item level of that gear goes up, and then you just constantly do this with your gear. So there's yes. things in the battle pass that are called upgrade modules that you take. You have the gear that you have leveled up because you can level up like the like mods for the armor and and stuff, and then you yes. take the gear that's a higher item level that dropped, and you up you use that armor to upgrade do your armor upgrade. Too. Yeah, so you get a ton of those in Saints of Passes, and then like the in-game currency for um, upgrading or learning more spells and like stuff for your subclass on top of gear and like vehicles and cool ghost shells and it, honestly, oh, ghost, it's, shells. It's... ghost shells are another thing you can use for monthly services. Like different cosmetic ghost ghost shells. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any benefits to different ghost shells? No. Um okay. honestly ghost shells are just looks. But because you can you upgrade every armor in the game and any ar anything that you can armor, ghost shell weapons that can all be upgraded to 10 and then they're called mastered Mm -hmm. um you can do that with any ghost show okay yeah um i don't know i don't so we obviously have been dealing with battle passes for i mean since warzone one right about like fortnite original warzone one kind of thing yeah, who did, come out, who did come out with the original Battle Pass? I don't actually know who came up with One that. of those. I thought it was one of those two. But, I mean, they've... I wouldn't be surprised into, if it was Fortnite, though. Yeah. the I think the biggest thing is, like... So you have the original ideology behind Battle Passes, which is you have something that's battle pass battle pass or you have to buy a battle pass buy the power pass something for free buy the battle pass buy the power pass something for free it's every third thing you get for free nowadays i mean let's look at the battle pass for modern warfare 2 battle pass for modern warfare 2 is you know you have a grid of what that was like a grid of 12 grid of 13 14 something like that and you went any direction you wanted you had, you as you played the game, you unlocked tokens. Those tokens unlocked certain things in the battle pass. But you're able by the end of it to unlock the full battle pass. Which one do we like more? Obviously, I, it's gonna be the second one. 
the creativeness behind being able to choose what you get first is really, really really cool yes it was implemented very poorly yes but like that model is really really cool in my opinion um i think a lot of companies could take that the just the ability to customize what stuff you get first mm -hmm. um and obviously you, you put like the the like you know every battle pass at the end of the battle pass has like some super rare items still make that the end goal but yes. being able to like all the way up zip through it with us yeah that would be really cool the creativeness behind what Mo what Modern Warfare Two did was phenomenal. I mean, obviously it was like a spider web, so you start with one, and then you had two, three. You could choose one of those two, and then if you choose three, you had four, five, six. You couldn't choose four because it wasn't connected to three. Like it, it was the ideology behind it was was really really well done. Like you said, though, the implementation of it was. I remember asking you, being like, "What the hell do these tokens do?" And you're like, "Oh," and I was like, "Oh, these these tokens are cool. They, they look cool. I have a little wolf on them." And the next thing, though, we were like, "Oh, they do with the battle pass. Got it. We got it. Okay." Realistically, I think you were the one that were like, "Oh, dude, look at the power pass. It's actually kind of cool." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I was like, "Oh, wait, that's where the tokens go." Because, but like, I just sat there. And... Battle passes. If they are done correctly, they're fine. They create a lot of value, don't... and like we've discussed this before, it's like when you create value in not just video games, but like anywhere, Anything. people will buy it. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing, that. well, the biggest thing is doing battle passes for, um. Oh god, I don't want to break out of this. Battle passes, Modern Warfare Two. Um, some of the guns were obviously unbalanced. I mean, as any first-person shooter that has multiplayer is gonna, there's gonna be unbalanced something or another. You can't stop that, but at the same time, it's do you just take those guns out? Do you just put them as blueprints on the market? Do you just I think the only way you actually balance is you separate the um basically don't nerf guns just mm -hmm. make all the other guns better. Yes. Like not better than the gun but just better than they are. Yeah. So yeah, in I a way, in a way nerfing all the other guns or sorry uh, buffing all the other guns and nerfs the gun that's on the top. And then obviously they've got to reach a threshold because then every every gun's going to just go one shot everybody, right? But just yeah, like exactly. bring. But they have because it's something pistols I hate, right now. It's something I hate about Tarkov. Right now there there are just guns that are just way up here. Oh yeah, like just there's way always going to be guns that are way up and, there though. And like and don't get me wrong, there are guns in the game that are just shit in real life too. But I wish they would bring the bar up on some of the lower end guns. Bit. That way, it's intriguing to run them. Because otherwise, you like it's like there's literally guns in the game that if you go against the guns that are anywhere near the top, you will lose those fights. They, I've seen clip after clip after clip of Modern Warfare Two having dual pistols running up behind somebody and just and they're down. It's That's crazy. Insane. For for a Call of Duty game, that's insane. Well, they've done. They, it's not like this is the first time. Back in Warzone One, they had the same thing. It was a Kimbo. Yeah, but I don't remember them downing on one. It one was shot, like no. It was like, was it double deagles or no. revolvers? It was double revolvers. revolvers, and you had to hit them like three times, but they'd go down. And it was fast though. Like it was, it was still yeah, fast, it was but it wasn't one cool. shot. Yeah, no, the the being able to just go and then just uh. Yeah, that's dumb. Um the game that's been taking over my life right now is uh, definitely gonna be Fortnite. Um uh, Fortnite has enthralled you, you, me. You're doing pretty well with Fortnite. Well, so with Fortnite it's a little it's 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 different. 
I mean, last night I, I, I created a clip that I'm going to upload shortly, which would be these guys, so there's these hammers that you can slam down on the ground and launches your player up in the air and then you land safely and then you can do it over and over again until the timer runs out. Well, these guys had two of them at the end of a duos match and they were just hammer, 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 and they were just constantly hammering you while they were hammering us back into the storm until I went down and then my friend Jason, he kept getting hammered and the next thing you know, he died. And that's how they won was the hammers. I'm like, that's it's you don't think of it until it happens and then you try and practice and it just doesn't work. Hmm. But I mean, you've seen me play Fortnite. Like, I know you don't like Fortnite. Um and most of it has to do with the artwork. I think the artwork's nice. I just um I don't it's hard for me to get in the true third person third person shooters and the fact that it's a battle royale like i i think i've kind of that's kind of died for me a lot yeah i i i mean for me like especially with fortnite i have i I mean zero build i'm no building because i don't want to be that was a kid that can build a a mansion that was a huge game changer for them that was and it honestly brought a lot of a lot of people back yeah. Or not really back, but it brought a lot of new players into Fortnite. And and players back. And players back. I mean that's Yeah, that's true, yeah. I just don't know. I mean, for me I could keep playing Fortnite. That's definitely not the issue. The the issue for me is like I just don't know when I would stop playing Fortnite. Like Normally, there's there's like an age on a game that's like okay, I think we're done. Okay, let's move on to something else. And like we saw that a little bit with with Call of Duty, but like Warzone is such a. It feels like it's such a. Like we were just saying, two shot down. That like in Fortnite, I mean, if you hit all your shots, yeah, you're you're definitely you're definitely definitely down in the guy, but you're not you're not gonna be. So you Do don't anything. like games that have a very short time to kill. Um, I don't like battle royales that have a very short time to kill. Because you build up, build up, build up, build up all this, all this, all this, and it's, mm. yeah. Uh, like Call of Duty, give me on any team deathmatch, start to destroy anything like that. I will, I will both dominate and be dominated and be happy with it. I will. I will not. What, search what's destroy, your? I will, I will, uh, but what's your thoughts on um, DMZ? Like after playing it, same as yours. Uh, as far as like just process, the gameplay loop compared to like a game battle royale loop. where you start with nothing and then get to something and then Love die. It. Love it. So you like you like going in with everything that already everything like you... AI'd. You have a loadout. You have yeah. X, Y, and Z. I mean, obviously, we've already talked about it. You know, we wish that in DMZ we had a a a, a was it a, a like a locker system where you would, you know, have a stash, um, kind of other things outside of the actual gameplay. Missions are a little meh, but like other than that, I mean. Like the gameplay, I, I like the new Call of Duty gameplay. Don't get me wrong, but like the whole DMZ thing, like it only takes you so far, and we've seen how far it takes you. They they could make that game mode very interesting. Yeah, they could. Um, it's just it's just they have to keep the problem realigning it with problem is is that there's only one thing to do in that game, and that and that's quests. That's all it is. Once you get the quest done, literally you're just playing it to a level up guns, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's I mean that's especially with those glitches that were out. I mean Yeah. I mean like the game has huge problems. The biggest with with all this, uh I think, you know, Fortnite versus 
Call of Duty, we definitely take a step back and we look at it. I mean, Fortnite obviously has something good going on. Um, uh, um, Fortnite definitely has something big going on. I mean, I mean, looking it up right now, uh, Fortnite's seen between three to four million concurrent players at one time. Just over three million um, at the time of writing this of December fourth, twenty twenty two. Still in the millions. What's and, PUBG I mean, like right now, as far as numbers compared comparative to that? Four hundred four hundred and twenty five thousand. And what was Fortnite? Three to four mil. But that's con- concurrent v- Dude, concurrent players I remember, of November twenty twenty two. Gotcha. I remember there a point. There was a point in time where um, pro CS:GO players were contemplating like switching over to PUBG before like PUBG blew up on Twitch. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was people that were saying because Fortnite was out, uh, and they were like, "What do you think about Fortnite?" They're like, "No, nah, too cartoony or whatever." Of course, yeah. It's really funny to me how the turns have tabled. Well, how Fortnite is way better than PUBG. Well, even looking at Warzone, approximately 1 million to 3 million players are playing Warzone daily. That's crazy. Um, Compared to Fortnite, right? Compared to Fortnite, I mean, we're looking at 3 to 4 million I think the the reason is is because it's cartoony. The reason is is because because there's a lot of kids playing it, and there's a lot more kids than adults that are playing video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's. Oh my god, Call of Duty! I don't know what M4 is, but give me a heavy shotgun. Dude, I know how to demolish somebody. There's a market in kids, man. There's a market. There's a reason why. Well, let's not let's not say that. It sounds like we're, you know, doing something else, but. No, no, I just mean like there's a lot of money to be made with because parents like to spoil their kids, man. Right? True. And there's. It's like you can market a product towards a child and um, They'll get people to buy, easily. get get parents to buy. That's what, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. That's all I was saying about that. Yeah. I. I do think that Fortnite is going to be around for a long time. I don't think Battle Passes are going to be around for a long time. You don't um, think so? Nor, nor do I think Call of Duty is going to be around for that much longer. Really? That's that's pretty bold. It's a very bold statement. But they, they're, they number made one, like a billion dollars on Modern Warfare 2 so far. Or something like that. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think... Uh, um, I'm wondering what uh uh Call of Duty's um number one organization is. What do you mean? Because they have organizations within um so like they have like uh optic and endowed and um like the the player like the players the oh the organizations that organize to play like professional professionally level? yes gotcha. do you think that if those start tanking that the game will start tanking no because they're honestly and this is speaking from somebody who has dived into that like creating a team and like creating yes. online organizations um the money that the money that activation is making isn't from professional organizations it's from consumers well maybe i don't know maybe that's that's just something that won't die honestly maybe there's there's games that will not never die as we're talking there has been a steady decline in professional gaming yes unfortunately that's very and, unfortunate and it's... it's weird because like you would think that that would be where the money's at but honestly the money's in streaming because the average viewer can be involved yeah because it's it's that's involving why. someone that is 
some like just it's just involving somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. They can just pick up a phone, watch it, and go, okay, here we go. Here's a Twitch Prime sub. Be yeah, everyone yep. has Amazon too. That's that honestly, and uh, could you imagine like if Shroud stayed in professional gaming, like where he'd be compared to like to where he is now? Big move. And on and, and, and honestly, it was more about luck because nobody really saw that coming. But that's just where gaming's going. It's going into. Did he get back into professional gaming this year? I think he does. Like I think most stream, most big streamers still do tournaments, but it's more like well, yeah. it's not like you're on a team anymore. It's like even Tim does. Even Tim does professional tournaments. Nothing Tim, well, nothing well, Tim, Tim doesn't Tim, belong Tim in professional com- events. Tim's in complexity, isn't he? He's part owner of complexity. Right. So like, yeah, it's the same thing. It's just weird like, where it's going because, you know, gaming's in a weird place right now. Nobody saw gaming being right here. Game yeah. like when people think professional gaming, they think like World Cup, Blizzard tournament, uh, Overwatch League. Like that's what they think yeah. about. They don't think about yeah. some Joe Schmo streamer that just got really lucky and and got you know good views. Got really lucky slash is a good content that's, creator. But that's also why it was so crazy when I'm gonna not say his name right. Buddha? No, not Buddha. What's his name? Um, Boogie? Fortnite Boogie. He won average Joe won how much? Millions? At a Fortnite tournament? Is it Boogie? Is it Boogie? It is I remember um, seeing that article about him not too long ago. About what? What is he doing now? I think he's on a, a tournament, something, right? Something about if if it's if we're talking about the same person, um Something about him, like, getting a divorce and something about, like... Booga. Booga? Yeah, that's not who I'm talking about. B-U-G-H-A. He, because he, I mean, he is still, I mean, he makes content on YouTube. I think the biggest, the the biggest thing, though, is, like, he, uh, I mean, like, 16-year-old kid won $3 million first ever. Fortnite World Cup. Like, that was crazy that he won it. Because, I mean, not only did you have big names there, you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you had Doc there, you had, you had Courage, you had, you know, uh, oh God, what's his name? Fuck. Uh, Dr. Lupo, you had Tim, you had all these players there. You had Tifu, I think, even. And, he won it, and it was crazy for this, you know, six-year-old to to have won it. Obviously, invitations need to be sent out for it, but I, I mean, it would be interesting looking into, which I will do after this, is looking into exactly what the process was of him. Was it just because he was good at the game? Was he? Was it just to, to get for him to get invited to something like this? I think that's the bigger one. Um. We're we're gonna end this off on a on a nice little note, um, nice little conversation we're gonna have. Uh, two different conversations actually. Um, the best storyline companion. So, you can do any storyline companion you want, and mind you, it could be anything. It can be you choose Pikachu from fucking Pokemon. You can do. Uh, You're the so chick. Good at these questions, man. They really make the you the chick. Think. Oh yeah, the chick from Bioshock, Elizabeth. The new one, the Bioshock. Uh, Infinite. not new. Infinite. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have mine. It's very, it's very easy to choose this one with my love of Borderlands. Yeah, I was gonna say Borderlands. Um, definitely gonna be Claptrap. I mean, that's that's definitely um. Up, that's definitely up there. I mean, I can't, can't not choose Claptrap. Is this has to be like an actual like like living companion, like alive? 
in comparison to what? Give like, me an example without like, revealing. Could I your say answer. like? Could I say Laura Croft's bow? Like, is that a companion, or does it have to be like an actual? Mm, like, interesting. Yeah. I would I would count that as a uh, as a companion. Okay, interesting. Um, that opens up so much. That makes it worse, actually. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, if we're going down that road, of course I'll choose Claptrap, but nothing's gonna beat Borderlands's two double penetrating unkept herald. I mean that that. That gun was it's iconic just for being so overpowered. Dude, this when you when you ask questions like this, I have to think about everything because I, I I'm a perfectionist, oh, yeah. right? So I have to like yeah. pick the perfect answer, and I I can't think of all the games. So my brain my brain's is like, what do I do? Well, you just choose choose your favorite game. I don't even have a favorite game. I can't even think about all the games that I've played that I actually like. Ooh. I think you got it. Uh, God of War, man. I, the the sun actually does a lot for you. <laughs> Archeris. Yes. Boy, boy. He, he, he's a pain in the freaking ass. But <laughs> honestly, if you didn't have that in the game, if you didn't have his abilities, a you wouldn't be able to go anywhere because there's a lot of places that you literally can't go without him shooting some like electric air to unlock the pathway, and then two like. In fights, he has a lot of CC ability to where like you can actually do stuff. If you didn't have that in the game, you wouldn't be able to actually play it. But obviously, it's so, by design, right? So, oh, of course. I mean, by design, as long as it's a, it's a good game. Um, could you could you play Borderlands without Claptrap? Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, technically, no. Technically, no. Do, no. Does he unlock stuff? Like to, to I mean, progress. through through the story, like he like presses buttons that you okay. wouldn't be able to get past. Gotcha. But yeah, um, I obviously I went through a list of top twenty five best video game psychic. Uh, so you had you have an advantage over me. What do you mean? You already looked at the list. Um, I don't think. Any of ours was on there. Let me check real fast. I just want to see. Would you? Who'd you say it was? Yours was. Prius. Shoot, yeah, no, that's it's, it's, he wasn't on there. Of course he wasn't, because everybody hates him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> top twenty-five. You ready? Sure. Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog two. That's a really good one. Luigi from that. Mario Bros. Diddy Kong to Donkey Kong. Cortana from Halo. Mm-hmm. Um, the Companion Cube from Portal. Um, Wheatley from Portal 2. Captain Price from Call of Duty. These are really Cold good. Train from Gears of War. Um, Clank Actually, from Ratchet Gears and Clank. War. Oh yeah, Lydia from Elder from Elder Scrolls, Skyrim. Yeah, Lydia Yoshi, dies a lot. Yoshi from, yeah, yeah, she does. <laughs> I got that that Findal, uh, guy, the guy that trains you in archery. He died in the first dungeon I went through. I was like, this motherfucker. Nope. Yoshi from Super Mario World. Dog from Duck Hunt. Octacon from Metal Gear Solid. I don't know who that is. Uh, Gar- Garrush from Mass Effect. He was a good sidekick. Um, Dog Meat from Fallout. Um, Peppy Hair from Star Fox. Um, wow, I didn't even think about Cat that. Catwoman from Bal- from uh, Batman: Arkham City. Uh, did you play uh, Star Wars Night of the Old Republic? Night of the Old Republic? Yes. No. Okay. Uh, Dog from Fable 2. Navi from Le- the Legend of Zelda. Oh, Kazooie from Banjo-Kazooie. That was their list. I'm trying to think of... 
Okay, here's a top 10. That kind of is a lot more than 10, but okay. Um, all right, top 10. You ready? <clears throat> number one, Atreus from God of War. Um, number two is Clank from Ratchet and Clank. Number three, Victor Sully Sullivan from Uncharted. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, number four, Mew, the guy that the head that sits on your hip. Um, Mew. 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, God of War. Cortana is number five. Elizabeth from Bioshock is number six. Um, seven is Yoshi. Um, I like this eight, list a lot better, actually. Yeah. Eleven is Ellie from The Last of Us. Um, Fifteen is Pikachu. Yeah, Sixteen this, is BD1. This list, this, this list is legit. Yeah. Sixteen is BD1 from Star Wars The Fall, Fallen Order. Um, where else am I? Fucking nineteen is Chum Bucket from fucking Mad Max. Um, I don't know any of these other games. Oh, twenty five Herc from Fall Far Cry. Yeah, so some of these people on this list. I mean, I like this list a lot more. Mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah. So I would say Claptrap is my favorite companion, just because I like Borderlands. And I like oh, cool. his sexual into windows. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, let's both pull up um, Overwatch characters. Overwatch 2 characters, to be exact. <clears throat> the breakdown of a century, folks. Snowball Fight 3v3 draft picks. Overwatch edition. Last time we did uh, Super Mario Brothers. This time we're gonna do Overwatch. Something a little bit, a little bit more um, in depth, uh, or something a little bit more restrictive than you know a roster of a hundred people. So um, obviously, uh, Brandon, if you want to go first, I mean, who do you think I'm gonna pick? I'm. I mean, I have a lot of. I have a lot of trust in you not to pick someone I've picked. So, uh, please, after after you, Hanzo, of course. Hanzo, of course. Uh, precision, a uh, long range, Just being able to uh, rotate because of the climb, like get around. Like the climb is a big one. Um, Ult from the side, obviously. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Obviously, um, I think we should do one tank, one DPS, one healer. I mean, that's okay. easy enough, right. right? Yeah. Um, obviously, I'm just gonna go tank first. Uh, Reinhardt, beef, beef man, guy, shield. Oh. Okay. Shield aren't Reinhardt. everything in Overwatch Two now, though. I know they get taken down very easily, but Reinhardt's number one. What's your number two pick? What? Do I choose for my tank? Tank's a pretty big one. You don't want someone that's a little bit on the beefier side. I'm I'm leaning towards Zarya. Zarya, okay. Zarya is a nice little like nice the little current one. rendition of Zarya. I think honestly, she's just so OP that like I mean, two two bubbles can be put on either you and someone else, or two yeah. on someone else. I mean. Gets heated up as you keep getting shot. I mean, that's more than fine. Nice little Zarya action. You did pick Hanzo, which was on my list, unfortunately. You picked um, Hanzo going against a snowball fight with me? Yes, really? because, I, because, I mean, mobility, precision, and everything. Yeah. But if we really had to uh, choose another one, um, I mean, depending on how good the Hanzo player is, I'm just, I'm definitely choosing Farah. I mean, being able to get those high skies. That's literally the hardest character that I have to deal with. So, yeah, Farah's. I mean, I feel like that's a good one. High skies. The only person that could really kill me is Soldier and Orissa. So, uh, I like how you didn't even go Farah for my Cassidy. DPS. <laughs> that's, that's that's literally that's what nice. I picked back in Overwatch One. To counter fairies, but yeah. now he's just dumb. He's so, <laughs> he's, yeah. so much. Now both of us are on our healers. Um, I'm not gonna lie; I already have mine. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm probably gonna and, take and, it. I'm gonna take her from you. Ooh, uh, her. You you definitely got her. Who is it? Moira. No. Really? It's gonna be, it's gonna be Brigida. No. Bridget. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Now, yes, uh, because I I did main Moira as a. Uh, in my Overwatch days, um, I, I, I definitely would have, uh, I would have chosen her. But the synergy, and, and I've with played Reinhardt. on teams before yeah. with Reinhardt. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I mean, just look at that very emotional Overwatch Two trailer when they come out in that bus and they're like, inner like shield and they go Bruh, you I wish know? I wish it's... they implemented that. They probably I will probably in the for PvE. Have you heard anything about PvE? No, let's actually look it up over here. Um they probably will implement something along those lines. Uh November twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, they gave an update detailing the reveal. Da 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 brand new map for Overwatch two da, da, da. Uh, uh, they're coming on the wait What's to begin with. with the developers notice that the development team. I don't know, man. Is it good? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, to begin with, the development team. The developer noted that the development team is working currently on the launch of season two Overwatch two, uh, writing their super focus in quotes on the over on that over the coming weeks however uh, he stated that blizzard would be talking about pve in the future along with other highly anticipated features so they don't have a release date except for the time frame is in quotes soon um aiming to launch overwatch 2 pve in 2023 but they don't know whether it's in the middle or end of dude February. i when Overwatch 2 came out, they said quarter one this year. Yeah. Are they really oh, having that, that much problems with it? Oh, no. Uh, I, I personally think that... Uh... I mean, they're basically making... You think Blizzard Activision's going down game. Hill, bro? I mean, what about Dragonflight, bro? Uh, dude, <laughs> Dragonflight! Holy shit, that's a that's a story for another time. But are you? Oh, final question for the for the podcast is Ooh, is okay. Is Mike done playing WoW after the how long? I can. I honestly thought we were gonna get back into it because we were playing Classic for a while, and years. then. And then we started playing Shadowlands a bit for a little bit there. And I thought we were like ramping up to get battle dragon flight, but I'll be honest. It's just I don't have the oomph. The time? The the oomph? No. I just don't have the oomph. I just don't have that. Let's go do it. I was actually thinking about this last night playing Destiny. I was like, there hasn't been a game in a really long time that actually makes me want to stay up all night. And I was like, is yeah. Destiny fulfilling the role that WoW used to? And it probably honestly it probably is. I could see I could see that I could see it doing that. Yeah. For me at least. Yeah. Well yeah. I I, I don't know. I like uh I would like to think World of Warcraft has gotten filled by another game that I'm currently playing, but uh I don't I don't see it being filled by anything yet. Especially with my job, it doesn't really That's the do problem for me for That's the biggest problem with WoW is the fact that you put you, you can't I'm... really play any other games. Yeah, that's not that's not my cards right now. I have Skyrim and Fortnite going on. You ain't gonna well, get into Tarkov with me, right? Nope. <laughs> Don't you dare bring up the T word with me, damn it. I think that's all from me. Is that all from you? 
I think we're good. I think it's a, a solid podcast. I do appreciate everybody listening to the end. Um, if you guys have any qu- questions, comments, concerns, add us on Twitter. Uh, you can see that on the screen right now. But um, other than that, I hope everyone has a good night. I've been Michael A.K. Freakwizzle. And I'm Recon Vipper. Recon Vipper. You guys have a lovely night. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.